I don't know if anyone has seen the headlines recently, but all the newspapers are talking about a new study published in Nature which looked at our planet's ice loss from 2003 to 2010. Earth loses huge amount of ice. Scientists say 4.3 trillion tonnes of ice melted in just eight years. Nearly 150 cubic miles of ice being lost every year. You didn't see these headlines? Well, hardly surprising, because although this is what the study showed, this isn't what headline editors have been running recently. It's headlines like this that have been repeated ad nauseam and have now become the latest mantra in the war against science. What's their source? Well, it's this paper in Nature. Hang on, isn't that the same paper? How can the same paper say two completely different things? There's no ice melt, there's a huge amount of ice melt. Which is it? Well, let me try to unravel it by doing something most journalists covering this story clearly haven't done. Read the paper itself. The researchers wanted to quantify the melt rate of glaciers and ice caps around the world, outside of Greenland and Antarctica. So they used a satellite program called GRACE, which measures gravitational attraction over different parts of the Earth. Where ice is melting, there's less gravitational attraction, and where it's gaining, there's more. So bluer areas are where ice is melting, the redder areas show ice gain. And the first thing you'll notice, of course, are huge areas of blue and very little red. A massive quantity of ice is melting all over the world, especially rapidly in Patagonia, Alaska, Iceland and northern Canada. But when it came to the Himalayas, they calculated there was very little net loss of ice over the area as a whole. Now how can that be? After all, most studies so far have suggested strong melt of the Himalayan glaciers. The problem is the only direct measurements have come from accessible glaciers at lower altitudes. The rate of melt of high-altitude glaciers, which are inaccessible, has either been extrapolated from these results or measured by remote sensing. And the Nature study suggests both methods are flawed. The Nature researchers, on the other hand, could only measure blocks of 100 square kilometres. They couldn't differentiate between individual glaciers. So they postulated that melting at lower altitudes is compensated for by ice gain at higher altitudes. So the conclusion was that while most glacial areas around the world are melting, high-altitude glaciers, notably in the Himalayas, are not. One of the researchers, John War, suggested by way of explanation, unlike the lower glaciers, most of the high glaciers are located in very cold environments and require greater amounts of atmospheric warming before local temperatures rise enough to cause significant melting. As a result of this revised data, the researchers found that the rate of melt from glaciers and ice caps around the world is about 30% smaller than previously estimated for the same period. In other words, about 63 billion tonnes less melted ice. But while the Himalayas had no net loss, nearly every other glacial area showed significant loss, and so did Greenland and Antarctica. So how does the revised Himalayan ice loss affect melt rates worldwide? Well, according to the paper, glaciers and ice caps alone accounted for 148 billion tonnes of melting ice a year over the study period. Peripheral glaciers and ice caps in Greenland and Antarctica accounted for 81 billion tonnes, and ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica accounted for 303 billion tonnes. That's a total of 532 billion tonnes, or nearly 150 cubic miles of ice melting every year. Since this is around 63 billion tonnes less than expected, it's a drop of around 10.5% from what was previously thought. So the headlines about the Himalayas don't tell the whole story, and in many news articles the rest of the story was buried much further down. No, further. There it is. War's study clearly notes that lower altitude glaciers and ice caps are melting to the tune of about 150 billion tonnes of ice annually, which the study predicts could lead to an overall rise in sea levels. But of course most commentators and opinion makers either missed that or decided to completely ignore it. Now it's OK to run with this headline because it was a significant piece of news. For scientists, the fact that the world is warming and ice is rapidly melting is old news. And indeed the study wasn't supposed to be evidence for global warming. Its purpose was to look at how much sea level rise can be expected from this ice melt. But for the popular press, the headline has to be balanced with what was shown in the rest of the study. Otherwise it's going to be misunderstood, as it was. Too many commentators simply looked at the headline and assumed this meant ice isn't melting and therefore the world can't be warming. 
Even that ubiquitous 10-year figure is an invention. The study covered eight years and clearly said so. But the fact that a 10-year figure has been so widely circulated suggests that journalists didn't read the paper, but in time-honoured tradition they simply copied off each other. But there is one silver lining in this catalogue of misreporting. Normally, when a scientific paper like this comes out, critics of climate science dismiss it as propaganda, fake figures and dishonest scientists chasing after research grants. But I'm delighted that in this case they've decided to accept it. Great! So they accept that over 1,000 cubic miles of ice melted between 2003 and 2010. So the next question they have to answer is, what on earth could be causing that?